Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I thought I would do a lovely cozy little vlog for you guys. Today is Sunday and I am just set to have a very cozy and relaxing day. There's a cold front going on where I am and I am not leaving the house. It is freezing out there. So I have already gotten up, exercised a bit, took a shower, and put on just some really comfy clothing. I'm having one of those lazy, lovely days. I think I'm going to fix myself up some breakfast. I've been really loving this banana oatmeal lately. I swear it tastes like banana bread, but it's just oats, milk, banana, of course, and some cinnamon. Absolutely delicious. And I might make a nice little cup of coffee as well. Then I'm thinking that I will watch some Great British Bake Off or the Great British Baking Show or whatever it's officially called now. I love that show and realize that I have two seasons that are on Netflix that I haven't watched. So I've been really enjoying exploring those. And then of course, I'm definitely going to be doing some reading. I've gotten some books out from the library. I'm still reading The Paying Guests. So I will give you all of my thoughts on that as we have a lovely, cozy little day. And then I have two books out from the library right now that I really do hope I get to read. The first is The House on Vesper Sands by Parik O'Donnell. This book is one that I have not heard about on booktube at all, but I saw it in the Strand a while back and read the inside cover and thought that it sounded right up my alley. It's fiction, it's mystery, it takes place in London in 1893. It's about a seamstress who jumps out the window or is pushed out the window with a cryptic message sewn into her skin. And she is apparently somehow connected to a rash of missing girls who have disappeared in similar circumstances. So there is a detective figure, there's a journalist, and they're trying to piece together what happened to this specific seamstress and what has happened to these other girls as well. The back cover has a quote that just sounds absolutely phenomenal. It says, Dickens is whirling enviously in his grave, read by a fire on a cold winter evening. And that just sounds like a wonderful treat. Victorian historical fiction murder mystery that Dickens would love. And then I also have Freshwater by Akweke Emeze. This is a book I've wanted to get to for a while. Well, really an author that I've wanted to get to for a while. This author is non-binary, trans, and they are from Nigeria. They moved to the US for college and 
the part of their life that interests me the most is that they identify as Ogbanji, and I'm definitely saying that wrong. It is a Nigerian term from the Igbo language, and it means kind of like evil spirit, sort of, um, but it's this idea that uh, this rebellious or mischievous spirit resides in certain children, kind of like a changeling almost within Celtic culture, and it's not something that I fully understand. It also has to do somewhat with like reincarnation and the idea of uh, a connection between the spirit world and the human world and it just sounds like a really fascinating concept and one I'd like to learn more about. Based on learning a little bit about the author and reading some of the blurbs of their books, specifically this one, Freshwater and the Death of Vivek Oji, it seems like there's a lot of the author's own life in these books and it's interesting to see how much is autobiographical, how much is fiction, how much is influenced by Nigerian culture and it's just something that I am so excited to read more about. I've gotten 33 pages into this book, it's barely anything at all and I already think that it is utterly phenomenal. It's about the character of Ada who is quote born with one foot on the other side and then she begins to develop separate selves. So it's kind of a look at the concept I was just talking about. It could also be seen as a look at dissociative identity disorder. Interestingly enough, Ada also uh, makes the trip to the US for college and there she begins to struggle more with her identity and her sense of self as all of these different parts of herself take over. It sounds really fascinating and I'm excited to keep reading. Like I said, I'm not very far through this book, but already it's fantastic. The first part that I'm currently reading is told from the point of view of these spirits which reside within Ada and it's all about how they became trapped inside Ada, how the connection between the spirit realm was never really severed, so they're in a position that most spirits are not, that they're still conscious of the spirit realm. It's really beautifully written. It's written simultaneously like an oral tale, like mythology, like legend, like folklore, but also has a very literary component to it. I think it's just brilliant so far and I can't wait to continue. And then this week, Katie from Books and Things posted a video on her channel where she narrates the first chapter of her debut novel, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall. I was so excited to hear that and Katie is a dear friend of mine and I wish her all the success with her debut novel, but I was also a little worried about reading her novel because what if I didn't like it? What if I do like it and everyone thinks that my review is just biased because we're friends? And so I was thinking that maybe I would be compensating in the other way and be overly critical of it. Um, but to be honest, I just absolutely fell in love with the first chapter and I can't wait to read it in print. I do have an arc of it on my e-reader here and I want to get to it before its release date in the States, which is at the end of February, either the 23rd or the 28th. I will put it on the screen somewhere once I look that up and nail that down for you guys. Um, but I just thought it was utterly phenomenal. I have high hopes from that novel based on the first chapter alone. It is everything that Katie promised me so far. It's Victorian historical fiction. It talks about the position of a governess in really interesting ways. It has a narrator who, or sorry, a main character who is a little older than the typical Victorian heroine and is a widow with hearing loss. It is written very much in the style of the Brontes, I would say and I'm just so excited to continue on with it. So all of that being said, I think it is high time I continue along with the paying guests.
so my reading is going well. I am a little further through, still nothing that exciting is happening, but Sarah Waters' writing is absolutely brilliant, and I love all of the historical context that she provides. It sort of takes place during the interwar period, um, right after World War I, really, and it just shows how social class and status is changing during that time period talks a little bit about women's right to vote as well and uh, it's just really well written especially the different character dynamics and the character development um, but i'm hoping it picks up pretty soon i think that i would like to make some tea and i thought that i would try out this specialty that i have which is a blooming flower tea it'll be really pretty and i hope it'll taste good too so we have rising spring. I'm really excited. That was really pretty. Let's see how it tastes. It smells delicious. It smells like jasmine. Tastes really floral and jasmine-y and wonderful. So it's starting to get dark outside, which doesn't actually mean it's late because it's winter, but yes, I have read about 100 pages in the book, still exquisite writing, still nothing particularly exciting happening, though there is a bit more plot to note, um, but not the, probably not the event everyone is talking about when they say how this suddenly turns into a fast-paced read because it hasn't. I did take a bit of a break to fold some laundry, which I didn't bother vlogging, and I started some dinner, so that should be ready soon. And I think I'll just continue reading and having a cozy evening and maybe give you one more update before the vlog ends. So it's very late, it's about 10 p.m. I did not make as much progress in the paying guests as I wanted to, but I am up to part two. Stuff has happened. I am very excited by what has happened, but it isn't the thriller, fast-paced read that I was expecting still, which means more is going to happen. So I should just keep reading it, keep enjoying it. But I did get a bit distracted by my husband, who said that he had never watched The Great British Bake Off. So we had to fix that. And I a little bit wish I didn't because he didn't like it. Who doesn't like The Great British Bake Off? Yeah, I don't know. So I think it's time to get ready for bed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cozy little video and I had a wonderful day with you. I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Bye.